Hi, this is Becky from Icing on Top Becky's Cakes, and today we're going to make this awesome Lego car. It's going to be decorated all in buttercream, have these light up headlights, and then we're going to use sugar for the headlight frame and for the windshield, and then we're going to put these candy Legos on, and the tires are going to be chocolate cake covered in chocolate ganache. So lots of fun, but first we have to have a cake frame. So if you haven't already seen my threaded rod cake structure, go ahead and check out that tutorial and that way I don't cover it all again, but I make this exact same cake structure in that tutorial. Only difference is I also drill a hole in this Lego square 10 by 10 Lego piece and I put that down the threaded rod as well. And then I use this right here, drill a hole in the middle of this board and this is a 10, 5 by 10 board. And uh, that's really the only difference because in the threaded structure that you see, the board's a different size. But since we have a car, we just have to have a different size cake board. I'm gonna cover that in tin foil so we can put the cake on it. I'm actually also gonna have the cake on um, a piece of cardboard as well. That way I can be decorating the cake and sculpting it without worried about, about it turning or anything while it's on <laughs> my cake structure because the cake structure, although it's solid, you can still, it can still turn and stuff because you're only on one threaded rod. And so the cake structure itself would probably be turning. So I'm actually gonna get a piece of cardboard that's the exact same size. And um, I'm gonna place that right on top of this wooden piece and that way I can just leave the wooden piece right here. I'm just gonna fit that right on there. It's gonna go right in that hole and then I'm gonna put the washer and the nut just like I showed you in the threaded rod tutorial and that'll hold this in place. But this piece can still spin so that's why I'm just gonna go ahead and do most of my decorating right on the cardboard and then lift up that cardboard piece and place it on this. Now as you see I have a little more room here so that the cake itself will uh, be resting right on the threaded rod and that'll also hold the cake uh, solid so that it doesn't slide and stuff so it kind of keeps it in place but gives a cool hovering look right here. So if you're making a hover car, this would work too. <laughs> but we're gonna put tires on ours. So anyway, cake structure always important before making the cake. And so go ahead and check out that tutorial for assembling this structure. It's really pretty easy. And um, then we're gonna get the tires made. So I'm using this little moose ring. It's about uh, probably an inch and, and three fourths, I'm thinking was what I used for this. And then um, I'm just gonna make four little tires out of this cake. And then what I'm gonna do, if you've um, seen my tutorial on the drip cake, I'm gonna use that ganache or use whatever recipe ganache you want, but I'm gonna use the ganache and I'm gonna pour it right over these tires. And that just makes it really easy for me to be able to decorate the tires. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little gel food coloring to my ganache while I add the liquid, I'm gonna add the gel food coloring at the same time. That way your chocolate does not seize and you don't want your chocolate seizing. And so we just add that at the same time we add the liquid and when we make our ganache and then mix that together and that'll give us some black ganache. But it'll still taste super amazing because I mean, who doesn't like chocolate ganache on chocolate cake? I love chocolate. So we're gonna pour this over uh, the tires on one side and then we're gonna flip them over after we put it in the freezer for a little while and Pour it on the other side and then stick them back in the freezer so that they're really easy to pick up and stick on our cake And then we're gonna pre prepare our cardboard piece that'll be the exact same size as our wooden, maybe slightly smaller because it's gonna go right on the top and fit there. So I had the hole in the right spot and now I'm gonna use that as my template to cut my cake. So this cake, I made a 10 by 10 cake here. And uh, so that'll fit my 10 by 10 board and I'm just gonna cut straight and then I'll be able to stack it on there. And then I also have another five by five square cake and I'm gonna use that and cut it to size 
and put right in the center, or a little back from the center of my cake. But I'm gonna first wrap it and stick it in the freezer because it's easier to carve and work with if it is partially frozen. And here, we're gonna work on the headlights. I'm putting my fingers in a little bit of vegetable oil and I have these silicone gloves on and we're just gonna rub it around the ring. And that'll keep the sugar from sticking to these metal pieces. And I wanted to do these now so that they could set up and become hard so that when I'm ready to put on the car, they will be ready as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that vegetable oil, just cover those, all the areas that the sugar is gonna touch and the sugar will pop right out. Now I'm using my pulled sugar recipe that is also on my channel and it's really just sugar, some corn syrup, teeny bit of vinegar and the vinegar just keeps it um, from crystallizing and so you can use it as pulling if you want to but we're just pouring it this time. And so that recipe is also on my channel. All these links I'll be giving to you below so I don't repeat myself and you don't get bored. So I'm just pouring that in the square piece that I should have moved my camera a little bit so you can see the square piece a little better but I just filled it just uh, to cover the entire square piece and then I'm gonna pour it here so you can see and just cover just the bottom of this, just thick enough to cover the whole bottom edge. And now we're gonna wait for it to firm up and when it firms up, we can just pop it right out of there. So the sugar is cooled now to room temperature so I can pull it up and then I'm just gonna push it out with my gloves and it comes right out. And so we have a perfect little headlight piece. And there it is. And if you have any kind of fogging or anything, just give it a little heat with your blowtorch and that'll take uh, some of that fogging and the bubbles, anything like that, it'll it'll take that off. But just do it lightly, otherwise you're gonna remelt this and you don't wanna remelt this. You just want to clear up any of that fogging. You can also spray it with a PME spray, which um, is edible glaze spray and that'll keep it from fogging up when you put it on your buttercream cake because sugar and something moist like buttercream, it'll tend to make the sugar uh, kind of start to fog up. You also don't want to put the sugar on until the day of or a couple hours before the party. So that's always going to be the last step you do. Now getting out our cardboard, I'm going to go ahead and put some buttercream down on that before I start stacking our cake pieces. I should also mention that you will definitely want to make two of those headlights. <laughs> I just showed you one, but yeah, make two. I'm going to place the first 10 by 10 down on the cake board, and then I'm going to uh, put buttercream down, and I'll get the next 10 by 10. Now I have these layers partially frozen. They're at least chilled, um, but yeah, working with them chilled, partially frozen, even a little more frozen than what I have them today is a lot easier when you're sculpting. So definitely don't just do fresh cake and try to sculpt it because you're gonna have crumbs everywhere, it'll be crumbling apart. You're gonna really be fighting it. So the more frozen, it'll be better, but not completely frozen because then it's really hard to carve. So I usually take it out of the freezer, give it about 15, 30 minutes, and then start carving from there. Mine, I had taken out a little longer, and so I had a little more trouble this time but uh, it still worked out really well. And I'm gonna pipe some buttercream here, and then I'm gonna take that five by five and slice it to the size I want it, and I'm gonna place that right there. Use a large serrated knife, and this is what I'm gonna use for most of my carving. This large serrated knife, it does an excellent job of carving. I'm gonna start back where my five inch square was, and I'm gonna angle it down so that it gets more narrow towards the front of the car. Up here a bit so that it also goes down to the right size that we want it to be in the back. So I'm just gonna adjust that as we go and and my model, I was just eyeballing it for the kind of shape I wanted. I looked at a few Lego cars and I kind of got an idea before I got started. So it's always good to have a good idea in mind or even draw what you want it to look, the end result to look like before you start carving. So I'm gonna carve up the end at an angle here so that it kind of slopes down in the back here. 
trim up the sides so that it's even with the car and it looks like one complete piece. So I'll just eyeball that as we go and just line it up and carve that way. And once I'm done, I'm just going to use a piping bag to fill my buttercream in because it's so much easier just to pipe it all on with the piping bag and then use an offset spatula to smooth it in. And this is called the crumb coat. So this is going to catch all those crumbs because after carving, there's going to be a lot of crumbs. And so, yeah, definitely while it's still chilled, apply the crumb coat. And then we're going to use some saran wrap and I'm going to cover that over. I'm going to smooth it out with the saran wrap. And um, then after we spread out the saran wrap, we smooth that down on the car. Now it's going to still have a little bit of wrinkles and stuff from the saran wrap. So we're not obviously getting it super smooth at this point, but it does help somewhat. And so, and it'll definitely keep your cake more moist when we put it in the freezer. Cause that's what we're going to do next is after we get it all covered with saran wrap, we're going to put it in the freezer for 30 minutes and then it'll be nice and firm again. And then we can pipe our true layer of buttercream and then we'll be able to work and do all the fun details at that point. Okay, then after the 30 minutes, we can pull our saran wrap off and cover it all with blue buttercream. Now I use my quick icer tip, as you can kind of see the, the lines of where the quick icer tip is. And the quick icer tip is just a really big tip, and that big tip helps get on um, the buttercream quickly. I like to use the quick icer tip, as you've seen me, anytime I'm frosting around cake or really any cake. It just gets the buttercream on in a more even manner. Um, and again, it's called the quick icer because you can quickly ice it. And I'm just using my bench scraper to kind of make some of those lines a little clearer. And then I'm also going to use my offset spatula. And once I get it as smooth as I can this way, I'm using this bowl of hot water and I'm going to dip it in there, wipe it off with a paper towel and then smooth that hot bench scraper over it and offset spatula because that'll really smooth out this buttercream a lot more for us. And also you can use those gloves that you had on. If you had your latex gloves, you can dip your hands as long as it's not the boiling water, but super hot water, you can dip your latex gloves in that and you actually use that to smooth your buttercream even more but try to like wipe off the excess water before you're doing that. But the heat is really what helps um, make the buttercream smoother. So it's really the trick there to smooth buttercream. Smooth out, we're gonna pop it back in the freezer for another 30 minutes. And then we're going to lift it using our bench scraper. I'm just gonna slide that under the cardboard all the way around until I can get my fingers underneath that cardboard. And then I can lift up my pretty much frozen on the outside cake and then I'll be able to lift it up and line up that hole right with where um, our rod is and once we line up that hole we can just drop the cake down right onto it <laughs> and that'll get our cake where we need to be so we can do the rest of our decorating. Now I'm using the flat end of my basket weave tip. That's a tip 48. And I am just gonna go all the way around the base everywhere you see, <laughs> everywhere you see this lovely silver lining here at the bottom of the cake. We're gonna pipe around that. So this will be the bottom bumper of our car. And we're gonna go ahead and pipe that all the way around our car. Then I'm gonna use a part of a smoothie straw. I'm just gonna cut it to fit, and I'm just gonna go ahead and place that right in the center of my cake to help support the layers of cake and keep them together and make sure that they don't slide when I carry the cake. So we're just gonna push that right in there, and we will cover that later with our Lego candy bricks. And then I am using a wooden skewer to mark off where I want my doors and um, then I will just pipe a little handle on for my doors after I'm done marking off where I want them to be. Now I'm using that square uh, uh, piece, that, that metal piece that we use. This is often for making um, mousse and stuff. So I'm just going to use that again and place it there so I know right where the windshield is going to be resting when I put it in. So I kind of push it in a little bit to tell where it is and that's where I'm going to pipe my buttercream. 
Then I'm using the small moose rings that I use when making the headlights and I'm gonna press them in right where I want the headlights to sit. And then I'm in a little paring knife for this part. So I'm just gonna just dig it in just a little bit, maybe a fourth of an inch. And just gonna scoop that cake out of there. And then I'm just gonna pipe some buttercream in there and smooth it out. The small offset spatula and then that'll be my headlights. And they'll be all ready for me to place those little sugar pieces. And finally, I'm just gonna pipe some white buttercream on uh, the back of the car here. And then I'm gonna also do the same thing on the rear view um, window after I do this part. So I'm just piping it on nice and straight and filling it in with some white buttercream and then I'll smooth it over with my offset spatula. Now this little Lego guy I just made using some modeling chocolate and, um, and I have that recipe on my channel as well. It's the easy modeling chocolate recipe. It's really simple to make and I just pressed it into a Lego mold which I can let you know where I found that. I got them on Amazon. And so that made making this guy super easy. And then I just painted with a little food coloring for his eyes and slanted a smirky smile. And we're just pressing him into our cake. I gave him half of a cookie for his steering wheel. <laughs> I just cut it with a knife and then I'm gonna press that in a little farther. And then I'm gonna use some buttercream to clean some of that up and to give the steering wheel some more definition. Then using the flat end of an extra large basket weave tip, I'm just gonna make a stripe right down the middle. Okay, here comes the super fun part. This is inserting the smoothie straws so that we have a tunnel for our light to shine through for our headlights. Now you gotta be really careful with this part because we do not want the smoothie straw to break out through the sides of the cake. So make sure you put it in as straight as possible, but if you're gonna err on a side of it tilting from one side to the other, it's better if it tilts a little bit in towards the center of the cake. <laughs> that way it's not popping out the side. So we're just gonna insert that. And the smoothie straw is gonna be not quite long enough, so we're gonna get a second smoothie straw, and we're gonna continue pushing that smoothie straw all the way through. Now, don't be alarmed when it makes a little bit of a mess out the back of the cake, because once it pops through, it's gonna break out some of that buttercream and cake in the back end, but that's what our repair work will be afterwards. We'll put the car in the shop, you know? And so then we'll do a little repair work but first priorities, we wanna get the smoothie straw all the way through. Here it comes breaking through. It's gonna push out some of the back cake and then some of the cake from the inside. So we're gonna continue pushing that front smoothie straw until the, the back smoothie straw is all the way through. And then we'll snip that so that all the cake that is gathered in that back smoothie straw will come out. Now you can really see where all the cake is collected that uh, came out so that is uh, great because now you can see how the smoothie straw is clear so that's going to give us a clear line of light once we do insert the lights in the back and so we can just snip it right here we're giving ourselves enough space that we'll be able to attach the lights but uh, now buttercream is amazing because it can fill in this big old hole this gap that we left back there but I'll show you that after we do our second straw so that we do all the repair work all at once. So both are through, we're filling in all the buttercream. I'm just piping it in using the tip I already had. And after I pipe this all in, then I can clean up and do the white stripe on the bottom and I can smooth this with my offset and a little bit of hot water and get it looking smooth again. But now we got both of our smoothie straws through so we have a clear line of light for our light to filter through and become like a funnel. It almost looks like a flashlight once we apply, put these little light bulbs on the end. It's like a flashlight shining through and it's really cool. You should try to turn off the lights and see what it looks like because it's really amazing. Line of sight and now I just want to use a little more white buttercream to clean up the insides of these so they look nice and smooth and not so rough. These are called balloon lights and you probably saw me do this approach on the winter cottage cake because this is the exact same way I applied the lights there. I took off the end and that way we can just insert it right into the straw. But in order for it to fit snugly on the straw, I'm going to cut a little slit on each side 
of the straw and that helps the straw open up a little more and then I can kind of squeeze this in so you can wiggle it in it's already turning on on me but you're gonna wiggle this in and that's why I left a little bit of the straw hanging out so I can wiggle this in and work with it and then the cool thing about this is you can turn on and off your cake just by twisting it and it is really fun So then we can take our sugar headlights and since they're the exact same size as that little mousse piece that we used, we can press it into the buttercream and it should fit there snugly. And then I'll pipe a little area right around it to clean it up and uh, make it look, <laughs> this is cool, and make it look even better. You can see the light shining through. I get so distracted by that. It is so cool. But um, you'll see better if you turn off the lights too. And then you, but uh, yeah, you can see on my glove how you can see the reflection of the light coming through. It's so fun. So this use a large um, writing tip and I'm gonna pipe some blue buttercream all the way the outside of that headlight, not only to emphasize it, but also to cover up any of the messes that we have going on there but this is so fun to make these light up headlights and of course the sugar pieces are all edible tastes like cotton candy i love the sugar recipe <laughs> but if you wanted to like put candy flavoring in you could make tutti frutti whatever kind of uh, lollipop you're looking for but look at that and then you can turn them on and off obviously you want to turn them on right before the party and not all the whole time before then so your batteries don't run out or you melt I don't know buttercream would this melt buttercream probably if they're on long enough I would think you might start melting buttercream <laughs> Anyway, here's our piece of square sugar. We're gonna heat that up from both sides and um, this will make it bendable for us. So I'm heating it up on this side and then I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna heat it up on this side. Now be careful, we're using a torch. So, you know, this lightly heat it. We don't wanna melt our windshield. So if you heat too much, you're gonna start melting it. You don't wanna do that. We wanna lightly heat it just so that it's bendable. And then we can just bend it like this. So cool to make our little windshield here. Then we're gonna take our windshield and we're gonna press it down into the cake, cocooning the little Lego man in his car. I'm gonna line it up as best as possible and press it right into the cake there. And then I'm gonna add a little border around where the uh, windshield was to clean that up a little bit too. I'm just gonna pipe a couple spots of buttercream right where I wanna put the tires. And then I can take my frozen tires out of the freezer and press them right into where I place the buttercream. Then we're gonna pipe on a few more details around the car and, um, and finally, I'm gonna be able to get out my candy Legos and place them anywhere on the car. I'm gonna pipe a little buttercream anywhere I place the candy Legos so that they stay exactly where I want them to. I bought this bag of candy Legos from um, Amazon and they taste like sweet tarts and they actually fit together so they're a lot of fun. But there is our Lego car. I had so much fun with this, guys. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, thank you for joining me. And if you wanna check out my other fun tutorials or like the light up winter cottage cake or other kinds of things, there's a lot of fun ideas that I have on my channel. And I'll put those other links that I mentioned down below so that you can find them, like the pulled sugar recipe and, um, and the how to do the structure. But thanks for joining me and please subscribe.